Hi, I'm Paul from Easy Composites, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use our XT135 tooling prepreg to produce highly accurate mould tools suitable for high temperature use. To produce the mould, I'll be using this CNC machined epoxy pattern that we made in the previous tutorial. Unlike traditional mould making methods that use a wet gel coat and then multiple layers of reinforcement wetted out with wet resin, a prepreg mould is made using layers of a special tooling prepreg, which is already impregnated with the optimum amount of resin. The tooling prepreg is cut as needed into appropriate panels. Once all the reinforcement has been added, the mould is vacuum bagged and then loaded into an oven to reach initial cure, under vacuum, for several hours. The new mould is then removed from the pattern and then returned to the oven for its final, full cure. In many ways, handling prepregs can be much easier than working with wet resins, especially on complex forms. The process has no smell, it's very clean, and in most cases, it's quicker due to the fact that the material is laid up all in one go. But the main advantage to prepreg moulds is the ease with which you can reliably produce accurate moulds that are stable at high temperature, especially if you choose carbon fibre as a reinforcement. This is the reason why prepreg moulds have become the industry standard in both aerospace and F1. To achieve a good surface finish and low void content, most tooling prepregs require an autoclave to cure, which unfortunately puts it out of the scope of most users. However, the XT135 system from Xpreg is different. It's designed from start to finish to work under vacuum only in an oven. The system is made up of a surfacing ply and a backing ply. We've got to allow these to fully thaw to room temperature before we can use them, so while that's happening, we'll prepare the pattern. For a new pattern like this, we need to apply a minimum of six applications of release agent before we can go on to make the mould. For further information on the best methods and practices to applying Easy Lease, refer to the technical data sheet. We now need to make templates that will allow us to accurately cut the prepreg and make sure that we get a good fit on the shape of the pattern. A very simple method of doing this is using masking tape over the surface of the pattern, marking out where the cut lines are, and then using that to make your templates. When templating for a mould tool, you can often do the component in a lot more pieces. So wherever you have any angles, corners or features, put a cut there, it will make the laminating process that bit easier. With the tooling prepreg now fully defrosted, it can be removed from the sealed packaging and the templates can be used to cut the material itself. You can see here I'm laying the templates down at 45 degrees onto the material. That will make the drapeability of the material and therefore the layup that bit easier. A knife tends to be the easiest way of cutting it as scissors or shears can easily clog with the heavy resin used in tooling prepregs. The backing material is cut in much the same way as the surface ply. So again, just going around the same templates using a knife. Rather than kitting for some of the smaller features like around the flange, I'm actually just going to cut some small strips at 45 degrees and use them as and where necessary. With the kit of tooling prepreg prepared, the release agent applied and fully cured on the pattern, we're now ready to start the actual layup. So the first ply down is the surface ply, which has a glass scrim on one side, and this is the side that should be placed down onto the pattern, then the other side is the carbon fiber reinforcement. Laminating with the tooling prepregs is much the same as working with any other prepreg. So accurate placement of the components onto the pattern, and then firmly press them against the surface, ensuring that it follows any contours. So here we're using a laminating tool just to ensure that we've got all of the detail consolidated against the surface of the pattern. It's important when applying adjoining plies of laminate to ensure that a slight overlap is maintained so that the entire surface of the pattern is covered with the surface ply. Where necessary, if you do get some gaps, it's perfectly acceptable to use offcuts of material to fill them in. Pay extra attention to small negative features such as this one, as it's very easy to get voiding or bridging in these areas, so ensure that it's properly consolidated down against the surface. The perimeter flange of this mould is being laid up using a series of strips cut at 45 degrees. 
Laminating in this tiling method makes both the layup procedure and the templating that bit quicker and easier. After the mould is cured, the joints between these pliers will become completely invisible. With the first ply down, we could now continue to laminate with the backing plies. However, to reduce any chances of voids or pinholes, it's best practice to do a debulk, which is what we're going to do now. Debulking uses a perforated P3 release film pressed firmly against the surface, and then it is bagged using a conventional vacuum bag and a layer of breather over the top. The bag should be properly manipulated into position into all of the contours, and then a full vacuum should be held. After 10 minutes, our debulk is complete, so we can now remove this from the bag and continue with the backing layers. The backing plies are substantially thicker than the surface plies and can be identified by having a very resin rich side. This should be laminated face down onto your layup. The same care should be taken as with the surfacing ply to ensure that it's fully consolidated against the surface and that no bridging of the material occurs. Again, overlaps wherever you have adjoining pieces should be maintained and wherever necessary filled in. So we've got the surface ply down, the first layer of the backing, and for a small mould like this, we're just going to do two layers of backing. Um, so that's the next layer that goes down now. When making a mould, it's quite different to making a component. You only actually need a very small overlap. So although we've got lots of pieces here, you can see we just retain adequate strength in the mould by just having a very, very slight lap of the join. That's the layup of the mould complete. All that's left to do now is to vacuum bag it and cure. The stack that's used for the tooling prepreg is exactly the same as we used in the debulking earlier on. So we have a perforated release film, a breather layer, and then the vacuum bag. As the reverse side of the backing ply is dry, we can actually take advantage of that and use the vacuum to slide the film into position, allowing it to fully conform to the back of the part. In some instances, it may be advantageous to use some spray tack or some flash release tape to aid in more accurate positioning of the film. As with all vacuum bagging processes, it's of paramount importance that the bag fully conforms with the surface of the laminate. With the bagging complete, this is now ready for its initial cure. One of the great advantages of the XT135 tooling system is that it has a very low initial cure of 65 degrees C, which is great for maintaining dimensional accuracy between your pattern and your mould. So we're going to load that into the oven now. Full vacuum should be maintained throughout the cure, and it's important that your oven is capable of accurate and stable control. With the mould now cured, we're going to release it from the pattern. With the combination of the S120 board sealer and several applications of Easy Lease Release Agent, you can expect the mould to pretty much fall straight off the pattern. With the initial cure completed and the mould removed from the pattern, we're now ready to go on to the post cure. This is essential to achieve the full service temperature of the mould tool. This is done freestanding off the pattern, and it's essentially the process of very gradually raising the temperature in a controlled manner up to the final service temperature, and then it's held there to allow the resin matrix to fully cure. So here we have the finished mold. Um, we actually produced this mold in a little under one hour, excluding the curing time, using just three plies of material. Although this is quite a small mold, the XT135 system can be used to produce a mold of any size. And because it's made using a carbon fiber reinforcement, it has incredibly low thermal expansion, meaning it will maintain its accuracy right up to its full service temperature of 135 degrees C. In the last video in this series, we'll be using this mold to produce a carbon fiber part using the XC110 prepreg system. So if you want to find out how that's done, stay tuned. Click subscribe to stay up to date on our latest video tutorials. 
Search online for Easy Composites to buy these materials with fast worldwide shipping, or keep watching by following one of the video links on screen.